Hey guys, welcome back to my page. So I'm going to revisit a topic that I had already talked about um, kind of in detail several times before. Um, earlier I did a video about this topic, I think earlier this year and then at the end of last year. So I want to revisit this whole issue about Dr. Umar Johnson being under attack because I think it's really important to address. And it's kind of late at night, so Hopefully I can get done with this video in less than an hour. You guys know I sometimes go on and on and on. I go really in depth about a certain topic. So hopefully I can get this knocked out in less than an hour. But I was just reading something on social media on Facebook. Because um, I like to follow and keep up with Dr. Umar Johnson as he was going on, especially with his school that he has under development. And when I Google, not when I Google, but I search, I did a keyword search of Dr. Umar Johnson on Facebook. And right up under his official Facebook page came another page, but it wasn't owned by him. It's not moderated by him. He's not the administrator of this page. It, actually, someone else runs this page. And it basically says, Dr. Umar Johnson is a fraud. You know, so they're calling him a fraud. This is not anything new. They've been calling him a fraud for quite some time now. And all of this is circulating around his um, fundraising for his school. He had a GoFundMe page. Um, you guys, most of you guys are familiar with the website GoFundMe where people are allowed to, you know, create... Um, a fundraiser around a certain cause, you know, it can be a cause, it can be for personal related expenses, or it can be for something that, you know, is much bigger than that, for a bigger cause, for an organization, for businesses, people raise money for different reasons. And so Dr. Omar Johnson had created a GoFundMe page to raise money for his school called FDMG Academy, Frederick, Doug Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. And he has this whole plan, like he has this idea. I'm not sure how mapped out it is, like on paper, but he has it in his head, you know, and he's expressed it. He's articulated his ideas about what he wants, what he wants for the school and what his school is going to look like. He's talked about it um, numerous occasions on his social media page, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. I think so much to the point where it has gotten the attention of some people who are beginning to question his motives and begin to question his intentions surrounding this school, this idea that he has to create this school. <clears throat> now, me, I think it's I think it's un unfortunate because I'm looking at him as a person. You know, and I'm looking at the overall plan cuz I understand the reason why I can understand the context for why he wants to create this school, you know, because it's all about empowering the black community, specifically African-American boys who are at risk. That's his whole agenda. But you have a group of people and I wouldn't say the number of haters that he has outnumbers his supporters. But there is a group of people that are attacking him. Now, I'm bothered by this because I'm also studying to become a psychologist, a clinical psychologist. And he got into some, he got into a little bit of trouble with the Board of Psychology for using the label of a clinical psychologist. He, you know, on his website, and on his social media page and his videos, he says that he is a doctor of clinical psychology and a certified board certified school psychologist. And so people who were questioning his motives and his intentions about raising the money for the school and they're asking, like, hey, where, the, where is this money for the school at? They decided to attack him about his credentials. You know, so first it was like, you know, actually, when you go go back in history and really see the progression of Dr. Lamar Johnson and all of this. Um, he's under, I feel, I think it's a huge scam if you, not for on his side, but I think for people who are attacking him, I think it's a conspiracy. I think there, it's like, it's a huge, you know, scam to try to get rid of this guy, a guy, an African-American man 
who has very strong values in favor of the African American community. You know, because it, like I said, initially started with this whole conspiracy about some conscious stripper that he got caught up with. He didn't know that she was a stripper. He just, you know, found her attractive and they connected. And I think he said that she would attend his lectures. You know, so she was somebody who came off as a person who was supporting him, you know, and his his whole mission. And that's why they say you have to be careful about who you invite into your inner circle. But sometimes it's just inevitable that a snake is going to slide in there, you know, some kind of way. And so that's what happened with Dr. Umar Johnson. Like he got caught up with the wrong person. And it's like after that whole conspiracy with this stripper lady, after that issue unfolded, a whole series of other things came up. You know, people... I think he ran into some trouble with his um, mother of his child. I think he has four kids or three kids. He has three kids. And I want to say two different baby mamas. And he has some issues about child custody and being able to see his daughter. You know, which is so, it's like, it's so unfortunate. You know, it's like people have their professional life and then they have personal life. And sometimes your personal life crosses over and interferes with the professional life, which is so, I think is so unfortunate because, you know, there's this wonderful platform, you know, that we have called social media where we can connect and reach out to people. And I think he uses it in a positive way. He uses it, you know, to speak out to the people in the black community and to talk about these social issues that affect the African-American community. But then when you have a group of people who think that you have some kind of bad or ill intent and ulterior motive, you know, and they trying to attack him. I think in response, he used that same platform that he initially was supposed to use for good, you know, to promote his school, to promote his lectures, to promote his whole cause. And he used that platform, you know, in a way that really, I think worked against his reputation because he began to respond to these haters, you know, that created these videos about him, who's commenting on his, um, all of his posts, saying that he's a fraud, you know, attacking him for the whole issue about the, um, the conscious stripper that he got caught up with, you know, criticizing him for not being a good father. And that's a whole nother issue because it's like, no one really knows the details of that story. He talked about it briefly and he does reveal bits and pieces of his life. And I think this is the reason why they say you have to be careful about what you choose to share on social media. Because look, in his transparency about talking about his um, struggles, you know, as a single father trying to get custody of his, his daughter, he's being transparent about that on social media. But at the same time, people are using that content against him. You know, to say that, oh, he's not, he's a deadbeat dad. He's not a good father. He deserves everything that's coming for him. Like people are really attacking this man. You know, he went to school to become a school psychologist, which he is certified. He worked in the school districts of, um, in the school district of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania for, I think he said over 10 years. Like this man has put in his work towards the black community. And like I say, it affects me. Like it kind of strikes a, a negative energy in me because I myself am working towards becoming a psychologist. And I also have strong views regarding the sociopolitical context in which we live in. And I also use social media, you know, to connect with my my following and to Sometimes, you know, share parts of my personal life, which I feel like, you know, is no harm in doing that because I'm careful about, you know, the information that I share. I'm very selective. It's not like I go in here and just share everything about my personal life. You know, there's some details that I do hold very sacred and nobody knows, you know. So I think that, like, this is a huge issue because it just reminds me how you just have to be careful and sometimes it's not so much of the system you know like people think oh it's the white man that's out to get us and a lot of times it's our own people 
that work to bring us down, you know, that have these motives against us, that are trying to conspire against us. You can have a black leader saying, okay, they see the issues that are impacting the black community and they have a, a idea as to a plan of what they want to do about these issues. And then you ha you'll have, it can just take one black person, you know, or a couple of black people and they go and make some, you know, post or comment and then people just jump on that bandwagon and then before you know it you have a slew of people after you attacking you trying to destroy you and so here i am creating like another video like a part two to previous video that i did you know saying prayers for dr omar johnson because my heart goes out to him but not just to him but to myself to other african-american women and men who are trying to fight for the black community, not against the black community, but trying to do positive things and create these programs, you know, and create schools and put certain institutions in place to elevate the African American community. And that's enough work in and of itself, you know, without people attacking you to do that. So imagine you having the task with creating something that does not exist. He's doing it from scratch from the ground up, you know, I think, and yes, he has raised money for the school. So he has some financial support. He does have people who do still attend his lectures, I think, which is a great thing that people still do show up. And I think that that's how he's able to make some of his money, you know, and gain income. But at the same time, when you have like, like I said, the page that I mentioned earlier, Doctor, it's called Dr. Umar Johnson is a fraud. That's the name of the fan page. I mean, it has, it doesn't have that many followers, but the fact that it still has posts on there that have over several thousand views, I think that, you know, that's just bad. That's not a good sign, you know, and to see that a lot of the people, when you look at the faces of the profiles, it's black people who are attacking this man. You know, they have really no grounds for what they are saying about him, what they are assuming about him. They just coming at this man saying, oh, yeah, he's guilty. He shouldn't, you know, be calling himself a psychologist. And y'all don't understand, like, how heartbreaking, how discouraging that is to have to put in so many years towards working towards the highest degree one can attain in a field. And you put in the work, you got the experience, all these years of experience. You know, his work speaks for itself. And then you have people questioning your credentials. And not even just people, but your own people, African-American people, people from your community, from your race, questioning your credentials. Like, y'all don't understand, I think, how stressful how challenging that of a situation that is, you know, because now he has to find a way to stand firm on who he is without reacting to all of this backlash that he's been receiving, you know, and social media can, I mean, we all know the negative effects that bullying, online bullying can have on a person psychologically, physically, you know, people have committed suicide because they just couldn't take the pressure from being bullied. And essentially, that's what's happening with Dr. Omar Johnson. Like, he's being bullied online. It's one thing to be bullied by strangers, you know, because I've been attacked, even in my own videos, my live video, I've been attacked by haters, where a thousand people just came and just raided my, my live video and just started hating and putting out all kinds of ignorant comments. But those were strangers, you know, so big deal. I didn't think much of it. But... It's a whole nother level when you are being attacked by people who you have confided in, people have you, people who you've done business with, you know, like you're supposed to be your colleagues, you know, how are attacking this man and having to now you haven't trying to find a way to figure out, OK, who am I? Where do I go from this point? You know, where do I fit in? Who do I trust? And people are saying, oh, well, why don't he just get a team? And they brought somebody else, um, juxtapose another conscious uh, man who actually did create a school. And he had several different locations for his school. And the time that Dr. Umar Johnson was planning to build his school, 
they're saying, oh, well, look, we found someone who's already created their school and his name. I don't remember the first name, but his last name, I think, is Klein, spelled K-L-I-N-E. And it's an independent African-centered school that he created. And people are like, oh, look, he did it. So why can't you just jump and go and do it? And it's just like, well, first of all, the school that this, I looked up the school and it's not a residential school. So the school that people are referencing about this other guy, I think it's more of a day school. It's not residential. So residential programs require a lot more things that you have to do. It's a lot more red tape that you have to cross before you can actually say that you're going to operate and run this school that Dr. Umar Johnson has in mind, you know, and people are saying, oh, well, he did it, you know, and he has a team because he's not, the other guy, Klein, he not, he's not doing it by himself. So it was, I think, him and several other black men who launched the school. Dr. Umar Johnson, I don't think he really has much of a team. And if he does, uh, they're kind of like behind the scenes, you know, like they're not on the, on the, on the front line with him. And I think that that's kind of unfortunate because I think when people look at you and they see, okay, you're doing things by yourself, that makes you more vulnerable for being attacked, I think, by people, you know? They see that, okay, you are one of three or one of five people on the front line coming together. They say, okay, well, you're not alone. You have a board of directors and not only that, but you look official, you look serious, you look like you are actually trying to launch a school because everybody knows even when it comes to small businesses, you cannot do it by yourself. You have to develop a team. You have to have a board. It's good to have a board of directors, you know, and committees so that you have different departments set up and you have different people that are allocated to handle certain tasks within your business. So he's talking about a school, which is much bigger than a small, small owned business. And he has, I think that his idea, like I say, you know, I'm still supportive of his idea because it's a magnificent idea. I haven't heard any type of idea like that, you know, especially residential school. And not only is it educational, but it's more has a therapeutic aspect to it. So that's what I like about it. And to me, it's just sad as me to see that so many people are African-American people are opposed to such thing. I mean, they're so fixated on him that they are just missing the goal, the underlining goal. And I'm thinking like, no, you guys don't see what you're doing. You're not, it's not that they are attacking him. You're attacking something that is meant for the African-American community. You know, he has this idea, this plan, and instead of you guys being supportive of it, and I get it. I'm trying to understand it from both sides because, of course, the people who, some of the people who are attacking him, some of them actually donated to the campaign. And he's raised, to my understanding, close to $1 million. So I think it's like somewhere around the ballpark of $800,000 that he's raised. And you have people who donated and they're like, okay, I've donated. We're in 2018. You have people who have donated back in 2015 towards this campaign and they're like, where is the school? So I get it, you know, but I think they don't get it because if they did, they would understand that you cannot just throw up a school even in a year. Like, especially if you don't have any kind of plan or operational plan, you have to have a business plan, marketing plan, like come on, financial plan on paper, not just in your head. Because I think a lot of his planning happens in his head. You know, I don't know how much of it he's written down. If he's even consulted with a financial advisor or a business planner, but he needs to because what he's doing is big, you know, and I think that people would take him seriously if he had a website, which he did, but is no longer in existence. His personal website at omarjohnson.com is not in existence and he had a website for the academy, FDMG, FDMG Academy, and that's no longer in existence. So I think that's so unfortunate. I think that the people who are attacking him help get it shut down. Those websites got shut down because of that. Not just the websites, but his GoFundMe page. You know, some of his social media accounts got shut down because people are accusing this man of fraud, you know? And that's a serious, they don't even understand. That's a serious thing. That's a federal crime. I think we live in a world of social media 
is different. People hide behind these profile pictures. You know, and yes, on Facebook, they tell you that you have to use your real name, but people don't use their real name, let alone their real uh, profile pictures. So with that, people feel like they can just go in there and say anything. They'll comment, they'll create videos, they'll do all kinds of stuff to try to destroy a person's reputation and their character and their brand, essentially, which isn't good, you know, and they don't understand, like, what you guys accuse this man of is a federal crime. You know, he can do federal time for fraud, you know, taking people's money and saying that you're going to use it for one purpose. And especially if it's a nonprofit purpose and he's taking it and using it for something totally different, which I don't think he is. I just think that with being under so much pressure and stress, this man is like, you know what? I'm going to put the school on pause. And yes, to keep the wheels moving, I think, for his own sanity, that's the reason why he's going to these different locations of schools to check them out to see, okay, well, I think he feels that stagnated and being able to really move about, you know, the direction of opening the school and getting it launched because, I mean, of course it takes money to do it, but it's other things that I think he can do that he's become stagnated with because He's afraid. I think he's more psychological. He doesn't have the support, you know, real support from people that are around him face to face, you know, that really have his back and really can give him guidance on which direction, which is the best course of action that he should take. There are certain steps that need to be taken more than just going to these different locations that he has for properties across the country. Hopefully this video is going to be quick because it seems like it's kind of chopping up. But he has like different ideas. He's been to different states around the country and cities. You know, he's been to Georgia, Atlanta. He's been to Detroit. I think he went to Vermont. He's considering like different locations around the country. And it's great. But, you know, he'll say, well, oh, well, that school costs a million dollars. And we're not, you know, they want 1.2 million. And we only got, you know, less than a million. So we still got to, now he's still in the fundraising phase. But even when you're in a certain phase, it's not like you can't do other things, you know, to work towards what you're trying to do. You know, certain, I, I can imagine, especially like legal regulations and certifications that he's going to have to get licenses that he's going to have to get for this school. You can't just pop up and say, boom, I'm going to open a school, you know. That industry that he's tapping into is a highly regulated industry because it's a residential program that oversees children. You know, any type of program that oversees children, even if it's just an after school program or a daycare, it's very highly regulated. So imagine a 24 seven residential program school and it's a treatment program, you know that's gonna be highly regulated. So certain things that he has to do and then with all of this that's going on in the the media you know like it's out there like people are saying he accusing him of fraud you know and it's not true you know he's had to go before the board of psychology to defend himself because people are saying that he's wrongly using the word psychologist because he's a school psychologist and so within the profession they have this thing you know it's all about jargon you can't use certain terminology you know, and it's a certain way you have to say it. Like you can't even say, even if you are a licensed psychologist and your specialty area is in clinical psychology, which that's what I'm working towards. You can't say you're a licensed clinical psychologist because there is no such thing. You can only say you're a licensed psychologist or you are a clinical psychologist. You can't use licensed clinical psychologist. But it makes, it's confusing, you guys. It makes absolutely no sense at all. So even within that, him being a school psychologist is much different than a clinical psychologist, but he's identifying himself as a clinical psychologist. They have a problem with that. So I think that maybe he may have to pay a fine or something. It's like anytime you have these complaints filed against you, against your certification, because if he wasn't licensed, he would not even be going before the board. He's like, he's certified, which is a form of licensure. I mean, I think that people get caught up in the terminology, certification versus licensure. I mean, it's really no difference. You know, it's basically your ticket 
to practice. That's what the certification or licensure is. It's your ticket to practice in the state that you're certified or licensed in. And him being, the fact that he has to, had to go before the Board of Psychology, I think it was back in January, to, you know, basically explain himself as to why he's calling himself a clinical psychologist, you know, it's like, to me, it's so bogus, but I think they're going to find him, you know, and it's like a strike against his certification, his license, essentially, you know, either way, it's still a strike against his credentials. So, you know, like how... Is that going to impact him later down the road when he wants to build his stuff? I feel like it's just, it's too goddamn much, you know? And I feel like some people say, okay, well, he brought that up on himself, you know, with the whole uh, conscious stripper conspiracy thing. You know, he got himself caught up in that. And just, I think you have single mothers feeling in a certain kind of way because he, uh, he has a, you know, he has more than one baby mama, essentially, you know? So... They're looking like, oh, well, if you was a married man, you know, we would follow you, we'll listen, we'll believe you and what you're saying and this mission that you're working towards. But we don't believe you, Dr. Umar Johnson, because you're not even married. You know, so him being a single father, he has to prove himself and his character to the African-American community, especially black women who are already feeling bitter because they are baby mamas. And so it's like they are projecting their counter-transference onto him, essentially, based on their personal experiences that, you know, that they've had, you know, unfortunate experiences they had with their deadbeat baby daddy, you know? So it's like they are vicariously looking at Dr. Umar Johnson and seeing, and seeing their baby dad through Dr. Umar Johnson, I think. That's what it is. You know, he's a stimulus. You know, in psychology, in psychology, there's this thing called stimulus characteristics where, you know, you know, a person doesn't even have to say anything, you know, but their presentation, the color of their skin, you know, their role, their identity can speak for itself and it speaks volumes, you know, and so him being a single black father who was not married to any of his child's mothers, that is a stimulus characteristic, which is impacting. It's a trigger for these single black women who feel some kind of way now all of a sudden because he's saying that he's a psychologist and trying to help black boys. And they're like, wait a minute, how are you going to help our kids when you don't even take care of your own kids. You know, he had this issue where he's fighting for, I think he's still in the process of trying to fight for custody for his daughter. You know, he has younger kids and it's just sad. I think it's just unfortunate because that's one situation and now is impacting his professional life. You know, there's no way around it. And I'm pretty sure he thought, okay, he handled that situation. It was done, it's over. But apparently it's not because, look, it's surfacing now when he's trying to build this school. Women are like, nah, we don't buy that because you a dad be dad. You know, and then he's putting this information on social media. Like, they actually screenshot a post where he was making a comment towards his baby mom saying that, you know, she's fucked up. She's not going to win in court. You know, it's just some things just really should be left off of social media. And I feel like it's bad enough, like your haters going to dig up dirt on you anyway. When you're trying to work towards something to build something, I've made this statement many times before. Anytime you're trying to build something that's great, you're going to have some haters. People say, oh, well, ain't nobody doing that to me. Ain't nobody ever tried to attack me or try to destroy my business or my brand or my organization. And I say, because you ain't did nothing. You ain't, you ain't doing nothing big enough. Once you start doing something big enough, they're going to come for your ass, you know, and now it's his time. You know, he's like I say, he's getting attacked by his own colleague, Sarik Nasheed. You know, what's the financial guy? I can't even remember his name anymore, you know. But it's just so, I feel like it's just sad. It's this his situation has many layers to it. And the best thing that I can say is prayers for Dr. Omar Johnson and that he remains strong and steadfast and 
Get around some people who you know really have your back. So the fact that he's very guarded and he, it appears that he only has, you know, he's a one team, um, one person team at this moment as it relates to him building his school. I feel like that's not necessarily a bad thing because, I mean, it's an adaptive skill that he's learned to, you know, that he's just had to kind of put, he had to put these defenses up, you know, to protect himself because he don't know who to trust. I mean, when you're under attack, come on. If y'all know, anybody watching this know, if you're under attack, it is hard out here when you're having to fight all of these different voices that you hear, you know, from people on the outside saying this and saying that about you. And these are real voices. I ain't talking about made-up voices in somebody's head, you know. A lot of times, the real voices that people hear, <laughs> sorry, guys, got a notification, but it's like the real voices become internalized voices that play out in a person's mind over and over and over again so who's to say that you know he might be have trouble sleeping at night because he got so much going on this man i can imagine as big as his head is you know as bright as he is all of the different thoughts and ideas that are going through his head you know he's talking about he's a psychologist he needs to get a psychologist every psychologist has to go through therapy i even talked to you guys about my experiences you know, my new experiences with going to treatment, which we have to do as psychologists in training. We have to go see a therapist. And it's like, I really recommend that. And I hope, you know, I hope if he watches this video that he he sees a therapist. You know, it's good. It's healthy to, to talk about it. But that's another thing. Like I said, it's who to trust, who to go to to trust. Because I know at this point, trust is a big factor for him. Trust is a factor for all of us, but I think it's even more a big of a factor for him because he has more at stake. He has a lot to lose, you know? He has a lot to lose. He's worked and built all of this. He's built his reputation. He's built his brand, his name for himself. He has, I think, a lot of supporters. So the people that's hating, like I say, I feel like his haters don't outnumber his supporters. He has a way lot more supporters than he does haters and the bad may seem like it's winning but it would never it would never win good always prevails so don't worry that Lamar Johnson like keep going keep going because you know I know it's hard and it's a challenge and it's sad you know and people make jokes about him comparing himself to Marcus Garvey and it's just like come on you know, why can't he compare himself to Marcus Garvey? I'm pretty sure his struggle feels like it, you know, because, look, he's been around this country, and people say, oh, he ain't did nothing for the black community. Like, the nerve of y'all. I was reading on some of those comments um, on that hate fan page they created for Omar Johnson saying he's a fraud, and people trying to compare his situation to Dr. Phil to say that, oh, well, yeah, they came for Dr. Phil, too. He lost his license, you know, and he destroyed his reputation. He's like, no, he went on to still make millions, millions of dollars after that. And even somebody brought that to the conversation to say, well, he continued to make money after that. Even though he had got his license taken away. And then you got black people defending Dr. Phil now saying, oh, well, no. Technically, he don't really provide therapy on television. They say it's not therapy, so he's not violating any laws. And it's just like bullshit. He's calling himself a doctor. And technically, from what I understand, you cannot call yourself a doctor unless you are licensed. Unless you are licensed. You know, you cannot call yourself a doctor, but he's called himself a doctor and they took his license away many years ago. You know, that's why he became a television personality. And they're like, oh, well, his situation is just like Dr. Phil's because, you know, Dr. Phil, he screwed up. He got it. Was, he was under attack. He lost his license. But big deal. You know, and he went on and he's successful. And the difference is that Dr. Phil, they're saying that he helped his white people, but Dr. Uh, Umar Johnson ain't didn't help the black community. It's just like, y'all are so silly. Let his followers speak for him. Let his followers make that determination to say whether or not he's helped them or not, which apparently he's helping a lot of us because people would not be following him if he was just not shit. You get what I'm saying? People would not follow him just on the promise of building a school. That's not why people follow him. Yes, a school is a good idea, 
But even before he threw the idea out there, he had followers. Even before I found out about this school idea, I decided to follow. I became interested in his work from the Hidden Color series. And I was, you know, from there, I researched him and started watching his videos and, and his stuff like that. So I was like, it has nothing to do with the school. That's not why people follow him. It's because of him, his person, what he brings. You know, when he's doing his lectures, like this man speaks the truth. He speaks about issues in such a way that no other person in this day and age has the balls to do. The stuff that the black community needs to hear, he's the only one that has the balls to say. I haven't seen not one. You got people that kind of dibble and dabble and say they want to be conscious and, and speak out. But this man is taking a huge risk. And I think because he's so vocal, because he's so courageous and speaking his ideas, vocalizing his concerns with respect to white supremacy, racism, discrimination, all the stuff that's happened over the years and is still happening today that affects the African-American community. He's so vocal about it. People, that's the reason why he's under attack because you got people that are split, even within the African-American community. It's split. So you would think everybody in our community, we all together and we don't fight white supremacy together. No, you got somebody who was like, no, he's not wrong. Let's not, you know, Let's not ruffle their feathers. Let's not, you know, create a problem that doesn't exist. You know, we good. We integrated now. We not going to change no more. You got black people that actually believe that. And you're like, just stop it. Stop creating these issues. You know, stop making an issue when it is not an issue. Stop making it bigger than what it needs to be. You got a lot of black people that think that, you know, and they are really opposed to a lot of the conscious leaders out there. So the fact that this man speaks out about these issues and he doesn't cut corners like he says the truth and you got like this whole people that are hating they call dr umar supporters umarians right when really they are the umarians the haters that people that hate are attacking that umar johnson they are the Umarians who come from a different planet. That's all that is. And they just came down to hate on Dr. Umar Johnson. It's so unfortunate. It looks like this video is like, I don't know, skipping. Hopefully it's not. But to me, it's just sad because it, it kind of speaks to the whole issue as to people. Black people always say, well, why can't we have this? And why is the black community so far behind other ethnic, ethnic groups? And it's like, no shit. Look at it. You know, we have black people that's trying to build something. Look what happens. People come try to attack it. You know, to me, this is just, it's sad. And it really needs to stop. But apparently it's not. And I think that that's what motivates him even more. I just like, I really just pray that he gets the help and support that he needs so that he can continue this mission out. And like, I've seen his recent videos and he looks good. He looks like he's taking care of himself. You know, he's eating right. I don't know if he works out. He probably should. That might help, you know, with some of the stress so he can maintain balance. Because equilibrium is so important, you know. He's all over the place flying in different countries and speaking internationally and that's great. But you have to take care of yourself first. Self-care is the most important. You can't take care of the black community and help black boys if you yourself, you know, is not taken care of. So that's important. I think that, I think seeing this situation unfold about Dr. Mark Johnson and these whole haters, you know, want to create this conspiracy against him. It just reminded me that, you know, when you have a mission and you have a big plan, whether it's for yourself or it's, you know, for um, society or a certain group of people in society, but you know it's a significant idea that you want to bring to fruition, you have to just be strong. Keep your focus on that. Understand that you're going to have people from all different sides coming at you challenging you questioning you tempting you they testing you it's like society here's a way of trying to see okay are you the real deal it's like why you got to go through all that you would think that excuse me you would think that going to school putting all of those years in school is enough 
of proof and putting all those years in work because after school ain't just it once you get school okay boom you're a psychologist no you have to get training under a licensed psychologist you know just to get your certification in his case or a license you know in my case it's a lot of stuff you have to do you know and still apparently that's not enough it's like you have to go through this whole pruning through society where they're trying to see if you're fit i guess you know it's like like I said, I I admire his strength and his courage. The fact that he has not given up. Because you got some people say, you know what? Forget this. You know, fuck the black community. I give up. I can't do this anymore. But this man, he's sticking, he's sticking with it. He's staying strong. He's being steadfast. And he's like, we're going to do this school. Let the haters keep doing what they're doing. You know, even... Though, there's not really so much to state. I don't think that the state is really necessarily out to get him. I think it's just these the people. The people going making these complaints to the state, you know, which leads the state to have to take necessary protocol to respond to these complaints, you know, especially when you have a high number, high amount, you know. It's just so unfortunate. You know, this man didn't do anything. Like, you would think, what did, what did he do? To these people, but I feel like that's just the wave of social media that we in. You got people that like to jump on bandwagons, low, insecure people who have nothing to lose, nothing to live for. They like to jump on bandwagons. It may it gives them a sense of purpose to attack people. They see everybody else doing it, making a negative comment, so they feel like, okay, let me jump on this bandwagon and get some attention to and and make these negative comments and what i mean how is that helping you it's not helping you as a black person it's not definitely not helping the black community you know and if we as black people it's not to say we can't check our own because yes we need our own internal checks within our community but it's ways i feel like we should go about it and doing it on social media so you can get a whole flood of other people from other races to start attacking. So now it becomes this huge attack from all different races and people around the world just attacking this black man that represents a figure in our community. Like that has to stop. It really does. So I'm about to end this video because I do have to get up and go to work tomorrow. It's been raining in LA. I don't know if you guys can hear the the rain, the wetness on the street and cars riding by. But yeah, we've had like couple rainy days this week and it's kind of actually been relaxing because i don't know like i've been feeling kind of invigorated with the rain it's very relaxing and i feel like it's just nature it's, it's what we need you know being at in california we hardly get rain out here so finally we got some rain and it, it really does feel good <laughs> it's very soothing it smells good i think it helps purify the air too so I'm amazed how fast my program is going by and the semester y'all is flying by and I am working diligently to collect the data to, you know, reach my sample size number so I can get the enough data that I need to be able to run my numbers and get some significant results. So I'm working hard on that still. But before you know it, this semester is going to be over and I'm looking at my third year as a PhD student, you guys year number three like before you know it when i say year number four i'm gonna be done y'all and i'm gonna be working i'm already working but i'm gonna be actually getting paid at that point you guys so this journey is amazing i don't need y'all to come attacking me because i think one thing he's lacking is a lawyer and see you know not to try to sit up here and throw shade at men but i think men just do things a little bit differently than women and some things, women, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna tolerate that. The woman, we got that motherly instinct. You know what I'm saying? So we are very, I think women are more protective sometimes than even men a lot of times. So get that lawyer on deck for real and, and set all those people down as doing what they're doing. Because when you know you got something that's really important that you're trying to work towards, you can't let nothing come in that way. You can't let nothing nothing i don't care what you have to do you have to set aside time to hire you a lawyer and to get that page shut down because i feel like that is defamation of character which is a crime 
You know, they're trying to defame his character and putting out stuff, statements that are not true. He can get a lawyer and get that page shut down. Because like I say, when I search his name in the Facebook search box to see, you know, what was going on, to see anything, you know, if he made any new videos, and that page came up under his page. So it was listed second under his page. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Scam. To me, it's just hurtful to see that. You know, it's it's hurtful. Because it's not right, you know, and you know that this man has a good heart. No, he's not perfect, you know. So, yeah, he probably messed up in his personal life with his past, you know, relationships. But that's that. That's separate. That ain't got nothing to do with this, you know, what he's trying to do. Give the man a chance, you know. Would it make him look better if he was married? Perhaps, I guess it probably would, you know. So that's something that he has to reflect on. You know, and think about moving forward, you know, because people are calling him a narcissist and saying, oh, well, you know, he has this narcissistic personality disorder where he just thinks it's all about him and he doesn't want to really take a look at himself and reflect on what is going on. You know, how is he contributing to this problem? Is he making his own situation worse? You know, so that's why I say that's where it would be helpful to have an objective third person come in, which a therapist serves as that role to be able to help him work through what he's been experiencing, these attacks, these accusations, this conspiracy that has gone on, you know, and that's in a confidential safe environment, safe setting. Cause they just really going, they coming at him from many different directions, saying that he's misusing his credentials, saying that he's not really a member of ABCI, which is Association Association of Black Psychologists. You know, like it's just a lot of rumors, negative stuff about him that they're trying to put out there in the media. People don't have nothing else better to do but they time. But to try to shut somebody down. Like I can't it's amazing. And then what cracks me up is that the amount of effort and time and energy people spend to try to shut this man down. I mean, we could be using that time and energy and effort to fight the system. The real issue, Dr. Mark Johnson is not the issue. He's not hurting the black community. But people are coming to him as if, oh, he's a problem. He's the reason why. It's like, no, y'all are misplacing your anger. <laughs> Is a displacement of anger. Redirect that shit towards where it needs to be and not against this man who is just a black figure in the community. He's trying to do something different for the black community. Like, give the man a break, you guys. Yes, it's taking a while for the school to get built, but have y'all ever thought to look at yourself and say, oh, well, maybe I've contributed to the delay? Have you took a look at yourself and say, all of those hate comments and you guys are making time, taking the time to do these videos, negative videos about him and create these fake pages on Facebook to defame his character. Have y'all ever taken the time to say, oh, well, maybe I am the reason why this man hasn't launched a school yet. Have you ever thought of that? Taking the time to do that? Maybe you should. Because I think that you guys do play a significant role. No, you can't completely just stop it, the process altogether because I feel like within this man, he's so motivated to get this school launched. He's so dedicated to his purpose that it's going to get launched. <laughs> I don't think there's nothing that y'all can do or say that's going to interfere with that plan. You know, because it's really God's plan. So y'all can't interfere with God's plan, but he's just making it more difficult. And I guess more stressful for him, you know, it's, it's a challenge for him because yes, I think he is the kind of man where he's used to kind of being in control and taking care of things and making moves and making things happen. And, you know, now he has to deal with things not going so smoothly, even with being a doctor. So... I respect you, Dr. Lamar Johnson, because I know the amount of work, I recognize the amount of work it takes to become what you are, what you have become today. It takes a lot, you put in a lot of work to build not only the credentials that you've got attained, but to build the name for yourself, the brand that you created. People know you who you are now. You know, they know you, they know who you are. The world knows who Dr. Lamar Johnson is. 
So going forward, I think it's important that you make sure that you project the right image that you want to be associated with Dr. Umar Johnson brand. Promote that image, you know, and think carefully about how you go about reacting. Remember, respond, not react to foolishness, you know. Because I know it's real easy to get on here and be like, let me put these Negroes in their play. Let me put these coons. And it's like, you really got to kind of think these through and know that you're playing a game of chess and not checkers and use a certain strategy about going about things. Because I, I, what I realized, because trust me, I'm kind of in a similar, I've been in similar situations where, like I said, I've been under attack by people and it's how you respond. It's not so much people attacking you because that's going to happen. It's how you choose to respond. And sometimes you can feed that negativity. So if you see that somebody created a video about you and they got over a million views and it's, you know it's hate underneath it, you know, you have to ask yourself, are you going to, are you going to come back? You know, are you going to just keep quiet and use that energy? Because obviously when you go online and you see these negative videos and messages about you, I'm sure that it invokes a certain kind of negative energy in you. It's not a good feeling. But you can take that energy and use it towards something good. It's called sublimation. You know this, Dr. Mark Johnson. Take that energy and use it. Do not respond because you have to be an example. You don't want to be this person that, you know, people make jokes about you and they attack you and then you feel you have to respond to every single thing. You have to react to every single thing. You're getting on here and you're calling people out their name and you're losing your identity. You're losing yourself. You are basically coming down to their level. You are higher than them. You are elevated. When I say higher, it's not that you're better, but you are held to a higher standard than they are. Notice that. They can get on there and make those videos and create, you know, fraudulent pages, you know, to try to attack your character. Nothing happens, right? They know how to go before no state, you know, and justify themselves. But guess what? The moment you do it, you had to go before the state, you know, and try to fight for your credentials so they don't take your credentials away. So that's what I mean. Like, you're higher than them. You're on a higher level, higher standard, and you have to keep that in mind. You cannot allow foolishness to direct your course of action. You know, you have to be very strategic in how you move. And I'm not enough. I'm speaking, like I said, preaching to the choir. I'm speaking to myself because when you think people, are those same supporters, like they even tell it on themselves. These are people who supported you. They donated to your, your campaign. That goes to show, do you see how quick people switch up? You have people that say, oh, I got your back. I bet you these same people will be writing long comments. Oh, I got your back. You mind, you know, I support you, Dr. Lamar Johnson, da, 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 da. But look, let some hate get started, you know? You got this hate trail going, the hate bandwagon. And they think it's cool, it's exciting, and they jump on that bandwagon. These people, they don't have a sense of stability in their own minds. They can't, you know, because they're, they, they waver. And even the Bible talks about that, how people are easily waver. You know, they, they move with the wind. In a sense. That could be a good thing, but it's not always a good thing necessarily, especially in this case, where you that easily moved somebody can go and tell you oh dr umar johnson is a fraud and you believe it you're so gullible you know that's how i feel like the kind of people that supported you know dr umar johnson and then turned against them they're very gullible people they don't have strong minds so they just go with the bandwagon you know cnn can put out a report and say bees are gonna killer bees are gonna come attack you know, the, uh, America, and they'll believe it. You get what I'm saying? Like, they believe in and everything. They take everything at face value. They don't think critically. It takes a special kind of mind to really think critically about a situation and see the big picture to see it's much bigger than hate and criticism.
You get what I'm saying? It's really much bigger than that. But they don't see that. They're just jumping on the bandwagon. They don't even know that they're part of the problem. Unfortunately, but stay strong at Umar Johnson. Hang in there. I have to end this video because, you know, I have obligations. I have to tend to them. We just got to stay focused, man. I just goes to show you, like, you know, it's not to say that we have to look at people who hate what you're doing as an enemy, you know, because sometimes it's just a part of the dysfunction of the African-American community. So the very thing that you're trying to correct, you see in it, you are seeing it manifest itself right now before you, you know, as you're trying to launch this plan, you know what I'm saying? To correct it, you're seeing it manifest within these people. You're seeing the dysfunction of the African-American community. It's nothing new. Like you say, it happened to all of the leaders. They had to face this opposition from their own people within the community where they don't feel like, they don't feel like a lot of times black people, we don't feel like there's anything wrong. We feel like the white man has all of our answers. There's nothing wrong. A black person try to speak out against the system. Black people get intimidated by that. It's like a threat to the black community because for so long, black people have depended upon master. So let somebody try to come and interrupt that process and level of dependency that we have on the state, you know, or on, you know, the government or, you know, white people, these institutions, the establishment, people would get frightened. You know, they get, they become afraid. They feel like their life and their safety is threatened, you know? So... To you, to them, Dr. Umar Johnson, they could be looking at you as the enemy. Black people, even though we share the same skin, they could be looking at you like you're the enemy. You're coming to disrupt their sense of stability. You know, what's normal for them, even though it's dysfunctional, it's still a normal state of functioning. They have learned to adapt to the fucked up shit that they have, the environment that they're in. So a person that's coming in and trying to play so-called, you know, Jesus and come in and save it and fix it, they're like, no, we want white Jesus to come in and do it. So that's part, we know that. That's part of the dysfunctionality within the African-American community, man. That's what you're wrestling with. It's a very complicated issue. So hopefully I was able to add some more enlightenment to this issue, to the situation, and motivate and push Dr. Lamar Johnson to keep going forward and everybody else who supports Dr. Lamar Johnson, let's just keep this thing going. Keep the ball going. Keep supporting him. Tune out the haters because they're going to just talk. Let them talk. Eventually, they'll become silent where you don't even hear them or see them. That's how you got to get, you know what I'm saying? You got to get to that point where you tune them out so much and you be able to recognize if a person is really in support of something that they're saying is in support of what you're doing or are these people really out, you know what I'm saying, to destroy you? But they can't destroy you, Dr. Lamar Johnson. It ain't, it ain't happening. You have complete control over yourself and over your destiny of your vision for the FDMG Academy. It's all within your hands. Isn't that beautiful? Despite the naysayers and the haters, that all of the power rests in your hands. The future of your school rests in your hands. As long as you're healthy and you're sane, you got this, Dr. Umar Johnson. And you got support. So I'm going to end it here. And thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Love you guys. Good night.